Hey everyone, first up before we get into this video, I just want to give a big thank you to all of you guys out there that have been showing uh, a lot of support over my recent health scare and issues. Um, I, I just feel like sometimes I have a tendency to narrow in on the negative comments uh, and not give enough praise to the positive ones. So thank you guys so much for your support. Uh, but you're here for some gaming, so let's get into it. Uh, Nintendo is basically going to be using new screen technology at some point in a Switch. We don't know if it's going to be uh, a Switch 2, if it's going to be a Switch Pro. Heck, maybe it's already currently the new revised Switch or maybe even the Switch Lite. We don't know. We just know that Sharp is going to be providing them. And this is according to Wall Street Journals, whose source is actually Sharp themselves although they're not really fully commenting publicly on it, nor is Nintendo. Uh, and I can't really read the Wall Street Journal article itself, so I'm going to kind of use a proxy uh, and go through an article on Vooks about it, and then we'll talk about this display technology, what it means uh, for the future, and uh, if it even should matter to us as consumers, because uh, it's quite interesting. So... Uh, Sharp is to supply Nintendo with the IGZO displays for Switch. What actually that title should tell you and should be exciting about is that IGZO is actually the top-of-the-line display technology from Sharp and is used currently by Apple products, in particular Apple iPads. And uh, this is important to note because iPads are famous for having some of the best screen technology in the entire industry, uh, and Sharp is the one that supplies it with the IGZO displays that are able to go up to 8K. Uh, they're very low power draw in comparison to typical displays, um, true color accuracy, and many other aspects about it there's a lot of technical jargon that i don't really want to dive too deep into because i don't think it matters so much for us uh unless you are an extreme enthusiast which i am but uh for most of you guys out there i don't think the, the actual technical details of how this display tech works really matters that much just know it's a big step up from the lcd technology that nintendo has been sourcing from japan display who has made all of uh, the switch displays up to this point uh so here it goes Nintendo looks to be switching up its supply chains, according to a new report from the Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal reported today that Sharp Corporation will be supplying Nintendo with displays using IGZO technology. IGZO, short for indium gallium zinc oxide, is a display manufacturing process that produces LCD panels, which are incredibly energy efficient. The current switch uses an anamorphous silicon ASI display, which were originally manufactured by Japan Display but has since been manufactured by Taiwanese companies. The screen quality difference between IGZO and the ASI displays are, on paper, ne negligible at best. Now, this is just the, the paper stuff. This isn't the actual tech behind it all. Uh, but IGZO's energy efficiency makes it a prime choice for mobile devices like smartphones, tablets, and, of course, the Nintendo Switch. IGZO displays are said to be more durable than their ASI counterparts, which would make it a good fit for the Switch Lite, set to launch next month. It's not currently known which models of the Switch feature the new displays, but the increased energy efficiency could be part of the reason the recently launched new Switch and the yet-to-be-released Switch Lite have a drastically longer battery life. Now, uh, this is them speculating... Uh, because the original report right here from the Wall Street Journal, um, I did get a chance to read it. Unfortunately, it's not working for me right now. And I, I tried logging in and it's I, I don't know why I can't read this article right now to show you guys. Uh, but uh, they basically say it's it's coming in, um, s you know, mod you know several versions of Switch, basically. Uh, so it could be the stuff today. It might not be any of the stuff today. And it could be stuff in the future. Uh, on the consumer end, if it is display technology that's in the new uh, the new revised Switch or the Switch Lite, it's not something that as consumers we're going to notice. Because it, it, they'll still be 720p displays. Uh, but the energy efficiency is an interesting point because... Uh, Spawnwave did a breakdown of the Nintendo Switch the other day, uh, the new version one, and it doesn't appear to be the die shrink that uh, we had been assuming it would be. Now, that doesn't mean that won't be the case in the Switch Lite. Again, we'll find that out when the Switch Lite hits the market, but there definitely does look like there were some changes to the transistors and some other things. Uh, I know Super Mario Day 64 has been putting out there that he thinks these are just better binned uh, versions of the X1, basically. Nintendo's been using the bottom barrel X1s for a long time, and now they're getting like the best of the best X1s uh, moving forward. That is always a possibility. However, uh, I don't know that you're going to see a battery life benefit from having the best binned 
uh, versions of the X1 because they're still going to run at the same clock speeds. Uh, so they, in theory, should be drawing the same power. So interesting uh, that we talk about this because it's possible all the power savings could come from the new screen technology. Uh, and if that's the case, then that's a whole nother ballpark. And, and to be fair, Wall Street Journal did tell us way back when, when they first started reporting on the Mini and on the Pro, uh, that they were hearing about new screen technology. And it's possible this new screen technology has been implemented. Now, if you're wondering if uh, teardowns of the Switch have been able, you know, the new Switch have been able to prove that it's new screen technology, that has not so far been the case. Uh, there have been different panels going in Switch over time. Uh, as an example, my launch Switch is uh, much different colorations than newer switches which seem to have warmer colors now technically warmer colors are often considered more color accurate for most different colors uh, but one color that's specifically negatively impacted by warmer colors is white because it gives white sort of a yellow hue uh, i can also affect blue skies in games and stuff like that i don't think most people have noticed uh but I mean, we've seen controversies with screen technology in the 3DS and between IPS and LCD and just all these different um, TN panels and, and, and stuff like that. I don't know why I said LCD, TN or I, or, or whatever. It, there's just been a lot of controversy with panels on 3DS and trying to find the best of the best panels. Uh, and there's, there's even a little bit of controversy now with Switch where some people prefer the launch screens, some people prefer the newer screens. It's all personal preference at this point. But now these new screens... Uh, whenever they come out, if they're not in the current Switch or the, the, the version 2 Switch or the Lite, uh, it could come out in future ones. And I guess the most exciting part about the technology is uh, obviously the, the, the power draw is the big thing, the, the battery lifesaver, but also just that it's widely considered a vastly superior uh, version of LCD technology. Uh, and they are the only providers of this technology right now in the marketplace. So Sharp kind of has it cornered. And this is why Apple's been sourcing them for so long for their screens, because they are pristine, top-of-the-line screen technology uh, that does take them to the next level, even though I do think a majority of consumers wouldn't be able to tell the difference uh, between them. And then again, I think a majority of consumers can't tell the difference between you know TN panels and stuff like that and, and this technology. So at the end of the day, uh, it's a more expensive screen too. Nintendo doesn't save money by going to the screen. And that's why it's one thing that I think the Ixo display coming to Switch might not be the current models. It could be a future model that's going to be more expensive. Uh, but who knows? These screens can go up to 8K, uh, but so can all the other screen technology Nintendo was using. So I don't really think that's notable. Uh, you know, different refresh rates. It can go above 60 hertz, you know, if they want it to, which it's not going to on Switch. So uh, basically Nintendo's only benefit they're going to see from it is uh, better battery life. And that is... The speculation right now on, hey, if these displays are being used now, that could explain the battery life change if there hasn't been any actual changes to the Tegra X1. Now, we don't know uh, just because uh, it looks on the surface that everything is the same size. That doesn't mean that things underneath it are the same uh, as Spawn Wave noted, you're not really going to know if this is a shrunk down die or not uh, until there is an x-ray of it because uh, one thing you will notice uh, in the computer market is when you go to from CPU generation, say like a 6700K to a 7700K to a 9700K, there's die shrinks along the way in there. Uh, but the actual chip is the same size. Uh, but when you x-ray it, you can see there's more packed in to that area, which is what a die shrink does. So it's entirely possible that the Tegra X1 has been die shrunk in, uh, in in this model and the next, but we need we need to x-ray that chip and actually compare it to x-rays we have of the X1. So uh, that's probably going to happen soon if it hasn't happened already. I haven't been able to find it yet out there uh, to actually see if it's been shrunk at all. But uh, what I do know is there's better battery life in these switches. This screen technology that sh you know Sharp told Wall Street Journal they're using for Switch uh, is is obviously one potential cause. It might not be used yet. I don't know. It, it, it's kind of a funky story because it's big news, but on the consumer level, I mean, we're just going to get better battery life. We're not really going to notice much else. I think some people are making a bigger deal out of this than it really is, but I think it's interesting to talk about because it's tech, and I love tech. So anytime we have a chance to talk about tech and about talk about how uh, switches or future switches might be using Apple screen technology. I think that's pretty cool.
anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. <sighs> Been a little bit since we talked about games, hasn't it? Feels like it. All right, I'll catch you in the next one.